And now I would like to invite Erin Wilmshurst and Jan Harrison to come forward on submission on the Pioneer Early Centre. Welcome. Um, I'm Erin Wilmshurst and I'm here today with Jan Harrison. We are parents of children who attend Pioneer Early Learning Centre. Our submission recommends that the Council oppose the draft annual plan proposal to explore the transfer of day-to-day -day operations of Pioneer Early Learning Centre to another childcare provider. Pioneer provides a unique, flexible and affordable service that the Council should continue to run. While our written submission covers eight key areas to challenge this proposal, today we are focusing on the two fundamental reasons to maintain Council delivery of Pioneer Early Learning Centre. The incorrect cost savings assumptions provided as a rationale for exit, which I will discuss, and the importance, impact and difference quality early childhood education makes, which Diane will talk about. So the rationale offered for exploring transfer of Pioneer Early Learning Centre is cost saving and the indicated amount is $100,000. This is an inaccurate figure. The Council will not have an additional $100,000 to spend on other areas by exiting delivery of Pioneer. Using the budget provided by the centre, it can clearly be seen that almost $50,000 of the costs are non-controllable, attributed to depreciation and corporate overhead. That is, they are a deficit in accounting terms only. Rental of the premises, while not included in the budget, must be considered in light of the nine community early childhood education providers who access funding via the Strengthening Communities grants to pay for their rental of council-owned premises. These average $30,000 per centre. Given these two pieces of information, the actual savings, should the Council exit provision, are approximately $20,000. There are as yet unexplored opportunities to increase revenue and impact on the deficit. There are opportunities to increase occupancy, increase the opening hours, significantly improve the range and frequency of marketing, and to review the business model, particularly looking at the mix of a number of timing and casual, of casual spaces. Increasing occupancy should be the highest priority. Using the data shared by the centre regarding current occupancy in both the over and under twos and the proportion of 20 hours free used by over three-year-olds, I use the Ministry of Education's funding tables to calculate changes to revenue as occupancy increases. These calculations are on page four of our submission. As you can see, even a modest increase of 3% in occupancy would result in an increase in revenue of $15,000. Should occupancy increase to 92% across the centre, which is admittedly a challenge, the revenue would jump by $70,000. We believe that the centre can be run on a more cost-efficient basis with a significant reduction in its actual operating deficit. We want the Council to continue to run Pioneer Early Learning Centre and are willing to work together with the Council and staff to further investigate and implement the identified opportunities. Kia ora koutou. I'm here to illustrate the points we have made in our submission about quality. The three pages at the end of our submission are where we highlight some of the available research into early childhood education. In essence, quality within the sector comes down to having highly qualified and well paid staff, low child to teacher ratios and small group sizes. The New Zealand Council for Education Research compiles well respected investigations and the paper by Linda Mitchell goes into some depth about the significant factors that point to quality. Pioneer has all these first-rate qualities, plus is an environment which is child and family oriented. Quality early childhood has ever-expanding impacts on the individual, their family, the education levels attained, and the potential earnings for that child and the amount of potential drain on our resources on vote, education, health and justice if they do not reach that potential as learners and citizens generally. Education is an investment rather than a cost to be saved. Our centre is one out of the box. It's no ordinary early, early childhood facility. We are understandably proud of Pioneer and we think you as councillors should champion it above others. I would also like to elaborate on the innovative way that Pioneer staff have used current best evidence around transitions to inform their practice. Teachers at Pioneer go the extra mile to support children's transition to primary school with purposeful peer visits as well as strong connections with local new entrant teachers. A lot of work has gone on in the background to ensure that theory underpins a realistic and workable process that has tangible benefits for the children, families and schools. This is groundbreaking and excellent practice that was noted recently by Aero. Internal transitions between the unders and over twos have also improved with key teachers forging lasting relationships with children 
who they are primarily responsible for. Finally, I want to point out that whilst only Erin and I stand here before you today to explain our position, it is clear from parent feedback and from the number of supporting submissions that we have support from our community. After the submission date, we received confirmation from Nathan Makaida Wallace, who's a Brainwave Trust speaker and director of X Factor Education, that he would like to see the council maintain its interest in early childhood education. E hara taku toa, he takitahi, he toa takitini. We are not just here, the two of us. Um, we, we are supported by people. We'd now really like to take leave lots of time for questions and discussion on this. That's Thank great. You. Thanks. Just um, one question. Um, it seemed that some of the feedback from parents was that um, that their underlying concern was that it was going to close rather than it would be transferred. Um, and I mean, one quote, quote was if it was being bought by a private provider but being run by the current team and kept as a preschool, then that would be fine. But no doubt the plan is to get rid of it, so therefore I disagree. Yeah, there was a, a bit of a change in wording from the draft annual plan as we see it now to the draft that came out prior. Um, the communication to parents said that it was to explore the possibility of tendering out the management of Pioneer and the communication from that point onwards was stark. We were in a desert, um, so a lot of us, a lot of parents assumed that it would be going to a private provider um, and that it would be that the council would be divorcing itself entirely. Now it's exploring, and the, we've yeah. had a bit so more of a I meeting think the, Yes, so the, there was a letter sent to parents from the centre um, in February, which was quite alarming, I guess, and, and was much more along those sorts of lines. And then the draft annual plan was much potentially softer. And right. so some parents took on board the letter, and that that's been okay. their position. Yeah. So, so what? So what? I mean, if it were to a um, community provider, so say it was a community trust um, mm -hmm. that was running it, like most of our childcare centres in Christchurch, they're not all private, are they? No, so the majority, the majority of the centres in Christchurch are private. Okay, we so have nine that fit under the strengthening communities funding that are directly parent-based communities who organise, who do the governance. Mm. That's only nine out of the uh, hundreds of childcare centres in Christchurch. But there are a lot of a lot more community providers than that, aren't kids there? Kids first. So Kids first would be would be classed yeah. as a community provider as a quite a large organisation. Um, however, in terms of early learning centres, they run one and are building a second. Yeah. So they it's a it's a different model of delivery. Kindergartens are term time only and yeah. shorter hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah. All right. Um, Phil. Thanks for your submission, Sharon and Erin. Um, look, I just wanted this, this is the staff report on our page 29, which in one of the options they list, list is adjusting the service to ensure it operates in a break even. I just wonder if you could tell us your view about that, that option that staff will put forward. <clears throat> I think that. I think it's about addressing those four key elements of each of those four key things, looking at marketing of the service to increase the occupancy, looking at um, the opening hours and potentially increasing those, those opening hours to, to make... Currently the centre's open 8.30 to 4.30, so that is a, against a traditional working day for a working parent that is shorter than a working day. So there are a group of people in the community who would not be able to access, so increasing the opening hours would potentially increase the, the longer number, or more longer bookings. Um, casual spaces are allocated currently on a... Um, if you walk in and ask for a casual space, you would get it if there's a space available. It's on a first-come, first-served basis. There's no priority given to pe parents who potentially would want a whole day space or a half-a-day space. And, of course, if you take a casual space, say, between 10 to 12 on a particular day, or that's potentially a morning that, that you've lost. I think there's some work to do around how that model is implemented to continue to offer some casual spaces, but also to um, maybe make it a little more in line with towards a, re a revenue driving model. Thank you. So if some work along those lines was done, could, could you, would that be workable for you as parents? We'd like to see parents um, communicated with and our ideas put into the mix. I, we don't feel that there's been um, a great deal of communication with parents about changing the model and how that might impact on parents. Um, and also reach the targets that are currently set for casual use for users of the rec, rec centre, which is also a very important part of the wellbeing of the community. So it's balancing those two things out, and there's certainly some work that 
we're happy to do, and obviously we've put a lot of effort into looking at the financial models. Um, I really yep. feel that a lot of this hasn't been explored fully. Yep. Sorry, I'll just okay. take Thank Raf because I know Raf was first and I overlooked him, so I apologise. <laughs> That's okay. I'm, I'm used to it. Hey, um, look, thanks for the submission, which, which, yeah. was, uh, which was very detailed and, and had some good ideas in there. I guess a, a couple of questions, really, which are, might be a bit broader, and that's really, this is council's only childcare operated facility. Um, so my question is, why should council run this, as opposed to, say, a community group or a parents' co-op or just the ECE sector itself? Because some of the comments you're making there is that would, in a way, make me worried about what you perceive as to be the poor quality of service provided by the general EC sector, which is where most kids are being looked after. So that's okay. um, of general concern. Certainly the research shows the Linda Mitchell one in particular used a lot of New Zealand data, so it's a bit more relevant to us. But it also looked at, um, there's a lot of research being done in the UK and the US about the value of having community-based centres mm -hmm. and the fact that institutions like councils and um, businesses in terms of running their own on-site ones, focus more on the staff and the theory and the qualifications of the staff rather than the fancy building that it's in and the, the fancy equipment that there is to play with. So, uh, and, and what the research clearly shows is that what makes a difference for children's learning now and ongoing is the relationships with those staff and the relationships are best formed by highly qualified uh, formed by highly qualified staff. So um, our private providers are trying to make a profit and they're doing some things about the session times and the delivery of things for parents that make it really difficult to access part days where you'd like to. So the person that comes in for a casual use between twin and 12 can't get that somewhere else. A friend who's doing, currently has her child in for six hours a day, when that child turns three, because of the session times that are working at that centre, she currently pays $32, she'll pay $30 when that child's using six hours free ECE a day because that centre runs a sessional model. So they have a morning session that's a very clear fin start and finish and an evening session. And so there's a financial cost to that parent for going to a centre that's running a financial model, plus they may have, they are more likely to have more higher numbers of unqualified staff on the floor and unregistered staff. So that suggests to me that this is a conversation you need also to be having with the Ministry of Education. About well, the, the Ministry of Ed has allowed the pro proliferation of private centres to continue, and we're subsidising them with taxpayers' dollars. These private, yeah, to these make private, private people aren't breaking any rules. No, no, no. But you're saying they're running to the bare minimum. So you're saying the service they're providing is not. Of a I'm good saying it's not as it's not the best it could be. What what, what the you may not know is is that the rules were changed. So uh, the, the the government of the day changed the rules to no longer require yeah, yeah, the yeah, move to 100% so, so qualified staff. I guess what I'm suggesting is it seems there is an opportunity here for community groups or even parents to get together and start to run these types of. And they do currently, and the council yeah. supports those through the strength, yeah. strengthening communities yes. funding. And, but it's, that in itself bring, brings its own challenges. Own challenges. Yeah. Yeah. So. But if at the end of the day that there was a model chosen that would be preferable to Absolutely. going out to private. Oh, yes, 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 without yeah. question. And yeah. we've asked that, it, we're very much of the opinion that there should be a preference to exploring a, yeah. a parent group before putting it out for open slow tender. Yeah. No, thank you very thank much. You. A, a very good submission. Thank you. Um,